my sermon to you will be entitled, The Teachings of a Queen Mother to Her Son. And the scripture was read. It's Proverbs 31. I just asked for the first 12 verses to be read. But it's the entire chapter that I will use. But of course, for time's sake, we went down to, chapter, to verse 12. But please, when you go home, please read the rest. And I'll be using the whole thing in the speech to you this evening. So Proverbs 31, sometimes it's called the Proverbs of the Good Wife. But notwithstanding, not just the Proverbs queen mother taught her son, but we also teach our children. And everybody know that mothers are a different breed, a different species all together. For example, everybody know that mothers have eyes in the back of their heads. And not only that, these eyes can grow, you can get more eyes depending on how naughty the child is. Because sometimes your hands have to grow eyes. You're, you're, you're busy doing one thing and you, you face around this side and the eyes in the back of the head looking to the back, but they're, they're to the side and they're going right up to the stove and the next thing you know, your hand just reach out. Grab the child and save that child from being burnt. So everybody know mother's different. Not only that, everybody know that mothers can read minds, don't it? And everybody know that mothers can hear better than Spider-Man. They hear all the nasty things you say on the way from school. And when they read your mind, you know, they read things that you just start to plan up in your mind. And tell you. And they know when you're telling lies, eh? They just look, look right at you and say, uh-huh, you're lying. And you're like, no, mommy, no. They, you're lying. Mothers are a different breed. But did you know that mothers are some of the world's best philosophers? Now, who are philosophers? These are persons who offer views or theories on profound questions in ethics, metaphysics, logic, and all these related fields where my poor mother never know about. But do you know that mothers are some of the greatest thinkers in the world? Now, I'll give you three names who qualify, according to the word, as philosophers. Um, Aristotle, anybody ever heard that name? Yes. He was num he's listed as number two on the list that I found. St. Thomas Aquinas, he actually was a friar, a Catholic priest, yes. And he was actually listed as number one. And Confucius, everybody know Confucius, don't it? Yes, Confucius was listed as number three. So guess what I did? I have a little exercise for you. I took some of the sayings that Confucius and Aristotle said, and I put them against what my mother and my granny used to tell me to see who was the greater philosopher. Well, here goes. Um, Confucius says, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. It's a great saying. Very nice and very interesting. Very, very profound. My mother and my granny tell me, say, hard yes, pick me, go and mark it two times. Now, which one you think more profound? Hm, I think my mother one more profound. Confucius say, everything has beauty, but not everyone sees it. My mommy and my granny say, pig ask me mama, what make your mouth long so? Mama say, no mind pick me, you are grow, you will see. Interpretation. The pig asked his mother why her mouth was so long 
Mother said, don't worry, child. You are growing. You will see. You're asking the mother, make she's ugly? Just now you're going to find out. Aristotle says, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. I love it. It's great. It's wonderful. My mother say, if all of your friends them jump off a cliff, you go jump off too? Story done. I think my mother won the competition. And I'm sure your mother won the competition too. Now, I wish I had written down some of the things that especially my grandmother, because she died, said to me, because I have forgotten some of them today. And I really wish I did write them down, especially when she told me the history, because she, her parents had gone through, um, had knowledge of slavery. And she started telling me all these things about slavery, and I did not write them down. And later on, I regretted it. But guess what? We have backup. The Bible is there. So the things that I didn't get to write down from my grandmother, it's written down in the Bible to help me. Proverbs 31 is one such text. It was already read. Thank you, Brother Buntin. It was already read this morning, but I'm going to go through it again, and you will see. So it's written by a son, and this son was a king, and he wrote down some of the things that his mother said to him. Now, some scholars believe that the son was Solomon, and therefore the mother would be Bathsheba. Some people, some scholars say no, it's a foreign king who wasn't an Israelite king, but that said, when I read the content and so on and looked at it, I, I tend to go with the, 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 the scholars who said it was Solomon who wrote it and that the mother was Bathsheba. However, it doesn't matter because however you take it, this was a mother speaking to her son and we know for sure this son was a king, right? And so let us establish if you think this is not for you and your children because you are no king and you are no queen and your children are no princes, let me establish that that is not true. That you are indeed such highly exalted person as a king or a queen. So let me establish that right away. If you have surrendered your life to Jesus then you are a queen mother. And you should talk to your children as such. Let's look at it. Revelation 1, 5 to 6. It says, and you can see it on the screen, I think. It says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the king of the earth, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood hath made us what? Kings and priests unto God and his father. Have you been washed in the blood of the lamb? You are king, queen unto God. Do not take your status for granted. Right? Apart from that, the Bible also tells us that he will make us the head and not the tail. So even if you can't stretch your imagination to believe that you're a king, at least think you know that you're a leader, for sure. But if you are not a Christian mother, then I take this opportunity to encourage you to surrender your life to Jesus so that he can wash you from all sin in his own blood, just as the, the scripture said, and I believe mothers you need all the help, and fathers, you need all the help that you can get in bringing up your child. And when I talk about bringing up a child, I'm not just talking the two-year-old, or this, because all when they're 20, you still have to be running behind them, picking up the socks same way. You say, but wait, how, how old are you? <laughs> 
So don't think the, the job seems never ending. Right? So take any help you can get. I would suggest to you that you hold on to it. And our God is a never failing God and he will help you. So if you have not yet surrendered yourself, please do so and get some help. As the word of God is our guide as Christians, we're going to learn what issues this queen mother discussed with her son. Then we're going to add these issues to our discussions with our children. And also remember that whether you're a Christian or not, that these principles will also help your child. So don't be afraid to use them up. Let us hear what this queen mother had to say to herself. And I warn you from now, brace yourself. Eh? She deal with some tough issues. So verse 3, 1 to 3, the first three verses, she says, and I put it in the Message Bible because it was read this morning in the King James Right, so I have placed on the screen for you what it says in the Message Bible, just so that you can understand it a little better. She says, oh my son, oh son of mine, what can you be thinking of? Child whom I bear, I bore, the son I dedicated to God. Don't dilute your strength or for unfortune hunting woman, promiscuous woman who shipwreck leaders. That's the first thing she said to the child. This is a king she talking to. And you see, she, she tell him the, the same thing that you would want to tell your child, I'm sure. Just in case you don't understand what she's saying, let me read it again for you in the Amplified Bible. It says, do not give your generative strength. You know what she's talking about? Let me do it again. Do not give your generative strength to women neither foreign wives in marriages of alliances, nor concubines, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. And in today's world, don't think this is just for the boys. Because men are big fortune hunters too. And you have men who are sitting down, or young men who are sitting down and they're saying, Woman have to mind me. And they're waiting for your daughter to progress in life and do well. And then they expect your daughter to propose to them. So do not take it for granted. Nothing that I'm saying to you, nothing that this queen mother said to her son is not for girls. It's for boys and girls. So... Girls, mother, talk to your daughter. Tell them, do not waste your generative strength on men who are fortune hunters. Right? How would you say this to your child today? Gold digger, yes. Brother. <laughs> of course, men and women alike. I would say to my child, my child whom I sacrificed, and you notice she played a card. The imagine nine months, Pastor. Imagine nine months I have you in my belly. And this is how you treat it. She played it right there. So don't think you're the only one who te I tell my child, I say, it was nine months of hard labor. It, the, the, the throwing up didn't stop. Never. The first three months, mommy tell me, my mother tell me, oh, it was so, calm down. It never calmed down. Things that I never want to eat. I didn't like pork before. I thought pork was too oily and blah, blah, blah. When I'm pregnant, all I want is pork. If I could have catch the grunt, I would have eat it too. <laughs> I eat pork till I don't know myself. I never liked Chinese food. Huh? I could not pass a Chinese restaurant, wonton soup. I drink in wonton soup all which how. I never liked eggs before. Oh, gosh. I had to go to the doctor and say, doctor, something wrong. Mm -mm. I eat an egg like it going out of style. Make it worse, my friend. Tell me she eat egg to a sore come in her head. Oh, my goodness. You, we went through a lot to bring these children. So play the card. My child whom I sacrificed everything, not, not to mention my nice shape. 
Mm. Everything drop down. <laughs> mm? I had such lovely little things up here all of a sudden. Some big things. So I told my daughter, I was like a cow. <laughs> I never knew they could get so big. Everything sacrificed to bring this child. Right? So don't be afraid to play the card. This queen mother played it. Use it up. He says, she says, don't waste your reproductive, in, in case you never understand what generative mean, don't waste your reproductive strength on fortune hunting men or women. Promiscuous or womanizing men or women, the shipwreck leaders. Remember, tell your child you're a leader, child. You cannot afford to get involved in them things. Sex outside of marriage will destroy you. No, remember, your child doesn't have to have money flashing all the way to be targeted by these fortune hunting people. All that is necessary is for them to recognize the potential of your child, right? They only need to know that your child have an auntie who sent a barrel for her every Christmas and she becomes a target because she have money because somebody auntie sending a barrel or she's in a good job. That's all that is necessary. So don't be fooled that your child don't really rich. So it's not really you. That not really concern you. Remember, your child has potential and they recognize that. If you don't recognize it, they recognize it and they will use it up. You better use it. You sacrifice to bring them here. Next, the second issue the queen mother talked to her son, and we know we are applying it not just to sons but to our daughters, is about becoming an alcoholic. Now, I told you these were tough issues that she dealt with, right? She said, verse 4 to 7, it's summarized for, for us. I think this was the um, not amplified message Bible. She says, leaders, my son, listen to me. She says, leaders, my daughter, my son, leaders cannot afford to make fools of themselves, Glopping down wine and swirling beer. And you, 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 this Bible put it, give you the right word. In St. Vincent, you would say rum too. Right? Least hangover, they don't know right from wrong. We have seen that so many times. Drunkenness, you don't know your left hand from your right hand. And people who depend on them are hurt. This is very prevalent when you're driving. Somebody is depending on you to get them somewhere safe. You are drunk, it is not going to happen. Somebody is going to get hurt. She says, my son, use wine and beer only as sedative. Only if you want to go sleep. And not just sedative because you want to sleep either. To kill pain and dull the ache or if you're terminally ill. No. The conclusion of this whole matter is drinking and getting drunk is that you're going to die before your time. Don't waste your time. Tell your children. The third issue, right? And I tell you, she deal with some tough issues. The third issue she dealt with was she said, make sure that you fulfill your responsibilities. She says, defend those who cannot help themselves. Verse eight to nine. You should defend those who cannot help themselves. Yes, speak up for the poor and, and helpless and see that they get justice. You might say, my child is not a lawyer. He or she can't help people get justice. But guess what? In whatever sphere of life you are, there is always the call to speak up and to help the poor and helpless. Whether you're on the job, at school, at play, speak the truth. It's as simple as that. 
speak the truth. We need to teach our children this. Someone else, for example, simple thing, someone else is getting blamed for leaving a door open. You know as you open the door, don't stand up there and let the person take the blame. Speak up and say, sorry, it's me. It's not Andrew. I was the one. Your child can do that. Wherever you are, speak up. Speak the truth. The fourth and final issue that the Queen Mother dealt with took up 22 verses. And it was all about how to find a good wife. Or if it's a girl, how to find a good husband. This demonstrates, this tells us how important this issue is. Ten, nine verses dealing with the character and 22 verses dealing with how to choose a good spouse. Mighty important, hard issues. We have to have the discussions, right? I summarized the verses for us and um, checked it with other authors and see how it measure up and it, it measure up good enough. And as I say, you can read the entire thing when you go home and don't get intimidated. They are just principles. It doesn't mean that you have to go get flax today and, and wash it and, and ting ting. No, we're talking about the principle of the thing. So here are the principles and these are the characters that your child should look for in a spouse. First, she says, she is rare and different from the women or the men of the world. She don't dress like the people of the world. She don't talk or he don't talk like the people of the world. Don't act like them. Verse 10, she is different. He is different. Second, he or she is trustworthy and dependable. Verse 11 to 12. Third, the person, the spouse you're looking for is somebody who works hard and diligently to be able to take care of her family, his family, herself, and those who need their help. Somebody who is willing to work hard and take care of those that you are around and responsible for. That's what you're looking for, not somebody who say, woman of him and me. Verse 20, she is kind, he is kind, she is kind. That person, the spouse you're looking for is somebody who is kind. You're looking for somebody who is honorable, verse 25. You're looking for somebody who is wise and discerning. Not somebody who take the last cent they have and buy rum and come home drunk and sing in two songs. You're looking for somebody who know that saving is good to put away for a rainy day, verse 26 to 29. And verse 30 to 31 the person is somebody who fears the Lord. Those are the qualities that we need to tell our children to look for in a spouse. Just in case you're saying that these qualities are for girls and not for boys, not for looking for a husband. No, because I said this because my daughter, we had a, a big cousin when she was about five because the socks that i bought i went and bought socks in um jacks or one of them jacks or somewhere and it says socks for boys no abigail says she's not wearing that socks at all no i had to walk down the whole saint vincent to find socks that says for girls right no just in case you're like that and you feel that, no, those are for girls. I went and I looked up separate from this scripture where I could find the qualities for the husband. And here they are. So I want you to check them out, these scriptures that I have here. And you can tell me later on if they are the same, if they are compatible, or if they are different. Right? But a good husband must be capable of loving his wife as Christ loved the church and gave up himself for her, Ephesians 5.25. A good husband must be capable of understanding a woman. But we don't understand women. We don't know what they want. They love talk too much, all kind of thing. No, First Peter 3, 7 said, this means that husband must listen to the woman, ask her some questions, and pay attention. If you pay attention, you will understand. That is what you're looking for in a man when you want to get married, my sisters. 
He is to be capable of honoring a woman, right? Who is the we are the weaker in strength. So he must be capable of honoring my weakness, meaning he must open the car door for me. Hmm. Somebody get it. <laughs> must see to it that I don't lift up anything heavy. Amen to that. Right? As soon as in smooth the shopping bag, he must run out and say, Come, baby, let me take those. I love that. He must respect and honor me as the weaker vessel. Right? The man must be able to protect the woman. The command to the husband is do not be harsh to them. And you can find that in Colossians 3 and verse 19. And if you're not going to be harsh to me, it means you're also protecting me against you. Right? You're going to be kind to me and loving to me. He must be capable of lovingly providing and leading her and the family. And that is in Ephesians 5, 23 to 29. Now, if you think those are different from the ones that the mother gave her son, you can tell me about it later. So when you go home, check and tell me. So mothers, what new topics are we to add to our philosophy classes with our children? One. We need to constantly affirm our children, letting them know that they are leaders, the leaders of tomorrow. And when they would have given their hearts to Jesus, they become kings and priests to God and thus need to act like the leaders and the kings and queens that they are. Tell them often as you can, rub it in. You are the, I used to hear that all the time. I don't know if, Parents still saying that to the children. You are the leaders of tomorrow. Every chance you get, remind them. You're a little bit now, but you're growing. Tomorrow you could be the prime minister. Remind them. Tell them that leaders don't get caught up in immorality. Wasting their lives and their energies and time on illicit behaviors and sex outside of marriage. Tell them. Leaders don't do those foolishness. Leaders don't make fools of themselves. Tell them that leaders don't get caught up in drinking because then they make fools of themselves and die before their time. Tell them. Tell them to defend those who cannot help themselves, to speak up and speak the truth for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. And finally, you need to stress the importance of looking at the content of the character when looking for a spouse. Not charm. When they bat their eye two time and saying, no, not charm. Because charm is deceitful. And don't depend on beauty. Because beauty fade and pass, and it passed very fast too. I can't believe pretty, pretty, pretty like me. Mm, it passed so fast. But tell them to seek out a spouse who fears the Lord. As such person shall be praised. Mothers, philosophers, all. Prayerfully go and prayerfully tell these things to our future leaders. Because if we train up a child in the way he should go, when he is old, he will not depart. The hand that rocked the cradles rules the world. Thank you.